And here we are, in our very own personal media tower, or more specifically, the bedroom of our personal media tower. Uh, it has a couple of interesting bookcases to look at here, but uh, first thing we want to look at is our menu. Now you can see we have three bars here, physical, mental energy, and life force. Physical energy is how well fed we are, mental energy is how tired we are, life force is our health. If either physical or mental energy goes down to zero, we start losing health gradually, and if mental energy goes down to zero, we pass out, basically. Now, you'll notice that even though we've been in a coma for six weeks, we're still down only at 40 mental energy. So, um, how about we just go straight back to bed? Now, sleeping, of course, isn't all that simple. In order to actually sleep, you need to play a minigame. And uh, if you're bad at that minigame, you uh, get attacked by a giant blue demonic sperm cell with wings. Yeah. Now, how this works is, when you try to sleep, there are two minigames you need to play. The first one is always this one, the road to your sleeping brain. This one is the minigame that actually determines what minigame you get to play in order to restore your mental energy. Uh, there's only one of these minigames we actually want, but I'll be showing both of them off. Now, the way you want to play this is, you always want to shoot that first skull that comes down there. And just to show it off, the first one we're going to get here is Cash Some Seas. You pretty much never want to get this one, because even if you're really, really good at it, if you're unlucky, you're still not going to get a lot of en mental energy out of it. The hitboxes on the seas are also really wonky, so even if you're where they land, you're not guaranteed to actually get them. And as you can see here, I only get one triple C in this entire run, and yeah, this is basically just one huge waste of time, so. You can see, not a huge boost there. So, uh, let's try again and actually get the one that's worth getting this time. So, what you want to do every single time in this is shoot the skull, and then make sure to shoot the C when it comes by. Because the one you want is this one. So Dream Lights, uh, it's very slow, it's very tedious, but it's pretty much guaranteed to give you a really big boost of mental energy. As you can probably tell, uh, the goal is to get every single bulb down at the bottom up to the sockets up at the top. But the problem is that there's these obstacles in the way, and pretty much all of them are complete death traps. There's almost no way to get through them. There's only actually two patterns that you actually want to try getting through. There's this one where you can go through the middle or through the right side, uh, or there's this one where you wait for these four javelins to go through and then go in through the middle. So the order in which that these patterns actually show up in is completely randomized. So this could be really quick or it could take a really long time as it does here. The thing is, it is pretty much a guaranteed huge boost, so it's really worth it to do it. Because in the time that it takes you to do this, you could do two runs of catch and seize and not even get close to the amount of mental energy you get out of this. So, yeah, it's not that fun, but you need to do it. And that's kind of a recurring theme in this game. So... Let's see, you're just waiting for the last bulb to go in, and as you can see here, pretty huge boost. So, uh, we're completely topped off on mental energy now. Now we just need to do something about our physical energy. And, uh, in order to actually do something about that, we gotta go down to the kitchen. So here's the kitchen in our personal media tower. It uh, has these posters here. They don't really do anything. And over here on our right, we have our food goo supply. Food goo is necessary in order to make any sort of food. So maybe we should top it off. We, let's see. Media tower key, this is for getting into the media tower. Bank card. Our video cam, which is a very important piece of equipment. Uh, let's see, a special bit chip, which we don't really know what's on that, blank bit chip, and here's some food goo. Let's just put that in here.
And there we go. So how about we make use of that? Let's make ourselves some food. Top off that physical energy. So the sandwich bar here. Uh, you can make some pretty weird sandwiches here. Or you could just make very simple conventional sandwiches. But that's not really any fun. So let's try this out. Uh, let's, yeah, mayonnaise. <laughs> Uh, let's eat it now. Yum, yum. Yeah. So that gave us a little physical energy. But the thing is, the things that you put into your sandwich actually matter. There are certain recipes that apparently give more physical energy than others. I don't know exactly which ingredients or what combinations give more than others. But as we can see here, just by changing up a few ingredients, this actually gave a little more than the other one. Now let's make just one more because we actually want to get over 90. There we go. Now, we have both physical and mental energy over 90, and that's actually really important. Because if you have both of those over 90, your life force will start increasing. Now, if you actually want to fill up your mental energy without going to sleep, there's also this little uh, drink bar here. Now, again, there's a lot of different things you can mix into your drink here. The thing with the drinks and the drink bar is, depending on what you put in it, it can either refill your mental energy, or there are some very rare combinations that actually will refill your physical energy. Or, at least, so I've read. I've never really been able to confirm it myself, but I guess I'll give it a couple more tries during this LP to see if it actually works. Uh, but, yeah, we'll take this one with us. We don't really need it right now. So, uh, yeah. So down here is the engine room. Uh, not really much here except for the tower fuel. And, uh, the exit. And, uh, the bedroom here. Uh, we have these bookcases, we have a crystal ball. And uh, we'll look at those later, because there's a lot of books in those bookcases. But uh, up here, we have probably our most important equipment. This right here is kinda useless, but I guess it's nice to be able to see how much food and power you have from up here. Uh, this is uh, a radio. And uh, if you click anywhere in the fish tank, you'll uh, get this. Uh, Walked up to the devil's house, I knocked upon his door. Lights were on, he wasn't home, he'd gone out to the store. Then I thought I'd like to see just how he kept his hand. I snuck into his open door, the place was totally rad. I stole the devil's That's terribly silly. Uh, I'll Record all the radio stations, uh, upload them in separate files, but uh, not in the main updates. But this here is the most important spot in the entire personal media tower. The weird remote control looking thing on the right is not really something we can use right now. But uh, this thing, this is the Databrick video phone. This is our only way to contact our home world. So first two here are media buyers. Uh, the ones that we will be selling our goods to. We have a couple of vendors for food goo, power, guitars, some media clips we can use in music videos. Uh, there's this guy, Hans Kranger, who we're not gonna even spend our time on right now. Video gear like vid chips and video cameras. And Mr. Red, who we're gonna call when we wanna finish the game. Now, we could call Stevie Groovy right now, but we don't really have anything to sell her. And that's where this comes in. This is where you're going to be spending most of your time playing this game. And it's also the most boring and tedious part of the game. This is the only way you're going to make any money. And you're going to need to make a pretty decent Audio. amount of music videos Title. throughout the game. So I'm going to be cutting most of these out because it's really not that fun to watch someone make a music video. But uh, I'll show it off for this first time. Excellent. So at first, just uh, titles for the start of the video, audio clip to start off the video, 
Yes. Uh, it doesn't really have much Audio. effect on anything, but uh, if you want to, you can. Now we actually have to choose the music we want in our video. So let's try Chunky Love. Excellent. That's all right, I guess. Video. So now we need to make the actual video. Yes. Now, in order to make an actual video, uh, the way this whole thing works is you can in the foreground and you have a selection of clip art basically to put into each of those positions now uh let's see yes sure that's that's good all right but this looks funky i guess that'll do increase the frames of the scene that's basically determines how long the scene is. There's, yeah, there's really not that much to say about this. This is why I'm gonna be cutting it out in future videos because it's really not that interesting to watch. All right, this is about ready by now, so let's check it out. Nice. So that was pretty good, right? I mean, who wouldn't want to buy that? So, uh, let's save that. And, uh, call up Stevie Groovy. Get ourselves some money. Hello, this is Stevie. Hi, I make music videos. I would like to see your latest music video. Perhaps it will fit in with my show. I would like to send you a video now. Okay, please send it now. Thanks. I'll get back to you after I've taken a look at it. I don't think so. So yeah, who would have thought that making one-fifth of a video wouldn't really fly? As a general rule of thumb, you pretty much always want to make your videos at least 10 scenes long. Because otherwise, they're almost certainly going to get rejected because... Who would want one-fifth of a music video? That's... no one's gonna buy that. So, let's try again. Hello? Hello again, Stevie. I'll be happy to look over your music video. I would like to send you a video now. Okay, please send it now. Thanks. I'll get back to you after I've taken a look at it. I cannot accept this trash. I hated it. So yeah, there's other factors in play as well. There's quite a few actually. Your record with VJ, as in if you've tried to sell her complete shit before, that's not gonna go well. Uh, your conversation with the VJ actually also influences how well it's gonna go with trying to sell your video. But there's, of course, also the actual content of the video. Now, that there's a pretty large amount of content in this video that's actually really bad to include if you're going to try to sell anything to Stevie Groovy. But how are you even supposed to figure that out? Well, let's head on down to the, uh, the bedroom. And in here, there's, along with all of this other stuff, there are actually interviews with each of the VJs. And uh, if you open up the interview with the Groovy here, you get a pretty large interview with Stevie Groovy that actually shows her personal history, her likings, her dislikes. And as you read through the interview, you actually find out that not only were her parents killed in a car accident, her aunt was also stabbed fatally 
in Central Park in New York. Now, the video I tried to sell her had cars, it had a stabby hand with a knife, and it had imagery of New York. So, it's really no wonder why she really, really didn't like it. It also shows a couple of things that Stevie likes, such as San Francisco, sunrises, flowers, sushi, stuff like that. I don't really know if the things that she likes actually has an effect on whether or not she will buy her video, if it includes those things. I think so, but I'm not really sure. But the negatives are definitely a factor in whether or not she will actually buy your video or whether she will pay highly for it or pay pretty low for it. If you want to read the actual interview, uh, just go ahead and pause it every page. Uh, I'll be sure to get all the interviews on video. Along with knowing the VJ's likes and dislikes, we also need new footage. There's a reason why we're in the distortion dimension, it's to get new footage for our music videos, that's the whole idea behind the game. So probably your most important piece of gear here is the video camera. Every single new area you get into, pull out your video camera and tape it. Even the rooms in your personal media tower are actually much more valuable than the video clips that you come supplied with. While we're down here, let's... We might as well go outside, get some uh, recordings of the distortion dimension itself. Let's see here. It doesn't actually matter from which angle you record it at. Uh, as long as you're in the general area, you're gonna get all the clips that the area has. Let's see here, it's the same- oh. The master of this dimension, the Metal Lord, does not welcome you. You must turn back. Well, now we get accosted by a guitar warrior. Let's see, uh... Who are you? I am a guitar warrior, loyal to my master and creator, the Metal Lord. Why am I not welcome? My lord will not allow fools from Earth to plunder and exploit his dimension. Who is the Metal Lord? The Metal Lord is the supreme dictator of the distortion dimension. The Metal Lord is an idiot. No, you are the idiot, and you must leave. Screw you, I'm not leaving. Turn away, earthling blood bag, or suffer complete deconstruction. You cannot destroy me. I can destroy you easily, with this sonic energy from my guitar. Oh no, you can't. Oh yes, I can. No, you can't. I can too. Cannot. Can. Cannot. Can. Cannot. Can. Cannot. Can. Okay, this is getting us nowhere. Do not come any closer, or I will destroy you. Hmm. Let's try taking a recording of him. Guitar warrior. <laughs> The master asked me to give you one more chance to save yourself. Turn back now, or I will finish you off. Do not come any closer, or I will destroy you. Yeah, so, um, we are really low on life force right now, and at this point, you really should just start the game over, instead of wasting a bunch of time trying to regain all of your life force, and yeah, screw it. It's gotten a place of glory. Guitar warrior! Guess what? You're not. 
you are yeah, that really didn't work out. So we can look at our awards. We don't really have anything. So this was a pretty miserable first run, but this is really how every first run is gonna go the first time you play this game. Next time, we'll uh, look at how you should actually start playing this game. And uh, hopefully not get killed by guitar warriors again. So, for now and until the next video, I'm Teok, and I'll see you later.